Hello and welcome to AzureMonk.com. This is Virtual Network Service Endpoints explained with the why and how using a story and a step-by-step -step demo on how to configure it in less than five minutes. Secret Recipes was a business which provided secret age-old recipes to their customers by charging a premium subscription using the site www.secretrecipes.com. Let's take a behind the scenes look at how this is implemented. The base infrastructure consists of a virtual network, which is connected to Secret Recipes headquarters using Express Route. The virtual network consists of a subnet where we have the web server for the website www.secretrecipes.com. This web server has a private IP address of 10.0.0.4. The backend storage for this website is hosted on an Azure blob storage. In this case, we know that the virtual machine has a private IP address of 10.0.0.4 and the Azure SQL does not. Let's start off with the why. For that, let's analyze the situation before we had service endpoints. Now the VM needed to access the storage account in a way that the exposure to the public internet is minimized. Let's pause here for a bit and understand the three things which happens here and the implications of it. Number one, the private IP address of your virtual machine gets translated to a public IP when it reaches out to Azure storage. Number two, the access control list of the blob storage itself will need to be updated with the translated public IP of the virtual machine. Let's take a look at how that is done using the Azure portal. This is the virtual machine which is making the outbound connection to the blob storage. And this is the blob storage account where we would need to update the access control list. Let's first click on the virtual machine and then, and then connect to the virtual machine. I'm going to enter my username, secret user and my password and use Azure Bastion to connect to it. Now that I'm inside the virtual machine, I would try and go to portal.azure.com from within my virtual machine itself. I see the application resource group. I would click on the storage account and then go to firewall and virtual networks. If you see here, you see that the options that are default selected are all networks, which means that everybody in the internet can access my storage account if they have the right credentials, which is not something that I want to. So I'm going to restrict the access. I choose selected networks. And if you see here below, I see that my client IP has automatically been populated. I select add my client IP and then choose save. The third point is the network security groups or the access control lists around the virtual machine itself need to be updated to allow Azure storage as an outbound rule. If you're new to network security group, I highly recommend clicking on this link to check out the ridiculously simple explanation of network security groups. Let's take a look at how that's done from the Azure portal. I would click on my virtual machine and then go to the networking tab. If I click on the outbound security rules, I would see that I have a deny outbound for the internet. My security team is very strict. So I go ahead and add a rule for an exception to access Azure storage. For that, I would click on destination as a service tag and the destination service tag would be storage in this case. And I would also append this uh, region, which is East US in my case. I'm only going to be accessing my storage accounts using the port 443. So I'm going to restrict the port, add in the TCP, enter my priority, and also give it a name and a description. Once I have all those fields filled out, I would click on add and then save. I'm good to go from a network security group perspective. While we're here, one thing to note is that even though there is a public IP, the communication between the virtual machine and the storage in this case happens over the Microsoft backbone network without traversing the public internet. All this is great and everyone's happy until the virtual machine starts making outbound connections to the public internet outside of the Microsoft backbone network. The information security team is not pleased with the fact that the virtual machine is making outbound calls to the public internet. 
Secret Recipes has an on-premise firewall where all internet-bound traffic is inspected and then sent out to the internet. So they dictate that every traffic from the virtual machine now be routed on-premise using what we call the force tunnel route and then go out to the internet after inspection. This was acceptable, but clearly this had an unintended consequence. The internet-bound traffic coming back on-premise was reasonable, but think of the Azure Virtual Machine to Azure SQL traffic. This now had to come all the way on-premise with multiple extra hop. Traffic which just needed to get across the street now travels a lot more than it needs to. Well, this caused slowness in the website. Moreover, the access control lists around the storage account itself did not change. We still needed to have a public IP listed, only this time it was an on-premise counterpart. In short, clearly the business wasn't happy. They wanted to have the public internet-bound traffic route back on-premise, but at the same time they wanted to keep the traffic between the virtual machine and the SQL remain on the Microsoft Backbone network. And the way you would achieve that is using virtual network service endpoints. Let's go back to the scenario and talk about how things would change if we implemented Azure Virtual Network Service Endpoints. The traffic between the subnet where the virtual machine resides to any storage account in the region where the virtual network resides always stays inside the Microsoft Backbone Network and it reaches using an optimized direct route while still maintaining your force tunnel route to on-premise. Well, this is accomplished because of the way routing priorities work in Azure and I'll make another video explaining that in detail. In short, for now, service endpoints takes a higher precedence than the default route advertised. Great, let's take a look at how service endpoints is configured from the Azure portal. In order to configure service endpoints, I would click on the virtual network and then choose my subnet. Once I'm in the subnet, I see the option for service endpoints. In this case, I'm enabling my service endpoints for the service Microsoft.Storage. And then I click on Save. The other advantage of service endpoints is that you can extend the identity of your virtual network to the platform as a service resource, in this case, Azure Storage. Thereby, you can letting you remove all the public actors on the storage account. Let's see how that's done. I would go back to my storage account and then click on firewall and virtual network. Now I would go ahead and remove any public access control list that I have on my uh, storage account. And then I would choose add existing virtual network. In this case, I have my virtual network, which already has servers and points enabled. So I'm going to go ahead and add that subnet and then choose save. If you see here, the biggest difference is now I don't have any public actors hanging out of my storage account but I'm still able to access it in a secure way and an optimized route. Here is a list of services that currently support service endpoints and the list is constantly growing. Well, great, everyone's happy, right? Until they found a seemingly similar business called www.notsosecretrecipes.com and it had the exact same recipes as the original. How did that happen? On further investigation, they found that there was a rogue administrator inside Secret Recipes payroll who was leaking this information to another storage account in the same region. In order to prevent data exfiltration, we can limit the storage account that Service Endpoints has access to using what we call Service Endpoints policies. Let's take a look at how that is done using the Azure portal. In order to configure service endpoint policies, I would go to the search icon and then go to service endpoint policies. Now that I'm inside service endpoint policies, I would go ahead and choose add. I would now choose my resource group for my secret recipes application and I would give it a name. No access to other storage accounts. And I would also give it a location 
in my case it's going to be east us and then i would define my policies so here's where i would choose the allowed resources or allowed storage accounts that my virtual machine or my subnet needs access to now i can limit it to just one single storage account or i can limit it to all the accounts inside my azure subscription in my case what i'm going to do is allow access to every storage account inside my subscription but any storage account that the rogue administrator tries to access outside of my subscription is going to get denied i choose next and then go to review there you go that's all that we need to do from a service endpoint policy configuration perspective this prevents data exfiltration from an azure storage perspective one thing to note is that as of today service endpoint policies exist only for azure storage and again the list is constantly growing excellent finally everyone's happy they've secured the access to the network in the best possible way without compromise on usability the business was getting good as well this was getting too easy to implement that the original chef who had access to the secret recipes now wanted to update the recipes herself by using the blob storage and accessing it from on premise well service endpoints does not work for on premise connection you can at any point of time add a natted public ip on the access control list but if you don't want any public endpoints at all in your storage account but still want to access your storage from on premise there is a way using private endpoints we'll demystify what private endpoint is in the next video thanks for watching we'll see you again in the next video